it is a cops and robbers drama. Hello? Uh, In this drama, Virapan is never caught. But thousands of little Virapans make a run for it, like actors in a popular Indian film. Sandalwood smuggling is a daily drama in this part of India. About 100 tons of seized sandalwood are piled up in this forest yard in Mysore in Karnataka. A fraction of the amount smuggled away. Indian sandalwood is being smuggled out of existence. Meanwhile, there is a federal comedy going on. Tamil Nadu and Karnataka are India's sandalwood states. If sandalwood tree sprouts in your backyard, you can't do anything with it. By law, it is state property. Now the, the rules are so rigid, once the tree is there, he has to declare it. And our procedure is so elaborate, and at the, 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 the time he gets his bonus. It will take minimum one year. That has to be simplified. At least if he gets his bonus within two, three months, naturally he will be pleased to give to the department. If he gets his bonus after one year, there are so many things by this thing. Naturally he prefers to give to the smuggler than to the department. So people smuggle, pack the trees off to Kerala the neighbouring state where rules are different. There, little distilleries make sandalwood oil, an export item that fetches pots of money. People keep taking chances, even though one could end up like this 18-year-old in Mangalore jail. He got caught the first time he tried. Virapan started with ivory, then moved on to sandalwood. Now, there isn't enough wood to sustain a big player like him. So he has kidnapped a popular film star. As ransom, he has demanded amnesty. The drama continues. Every day, a little more of the fragrance vanishes. The Rajaji National Park is near Dehradun in the foothills of the Himalaya. It is the summer home of the Gujars, a nomadic community of buffalo herders. Sell milk and milk products, Muslim and vegetarian. Gujars have roamed this forest for centuries, but now it is a national park and by wildlife law people can't live in a park. So every summer the Gujars come ready to haggle and bargain. We have been staying in the forest for a long time. 
When our people came from the hills, we had to bribe the foresters with milk, butter and cash. They had set up rates of offerings and we had to pay accordingly. In 1992, they told us that all the countries of the world got together to save the forest. And the forests will be closed down for human habitation. If you want to stay in the forest now, you'll have to pay a Rio tax, which is double. Since then, the double offering Rio is stuck with us. The long arm of global governance has reached into the Himalayan foothills. First, there is the forest that has to be eaten up. Ah, lots of money. Then, there is the eaten up forest that has to be regenerated. Very good. Even more money. In a forestation, like in any other public works, when government sanctions money for planting of saplings, a certain formula would evolve. That is, for a foresting one hectare of degraded forest, you require 10,000 rupees. Actual expenditure may be much less, and the difference would then be pocketed. On the other side, there is a grand corruption. Grand corruption takes place at the level of policy. Whether you have a dictatorial society or a democratic one, politicians will be always be prepared to loot the treasury. There are two ways of looting the treasury. One is the unofficial loot, which is where uh, people uh, get money to line their own pockets. And the other is the official loot. This official loot usually takes the form of cultivating vote banks by giving subsidies, by giving tax rebates, uh, by not even allowing tax to take place on certain things, and so on and so forth. Often this can have a very negative impact on the environment. Policies are city-centered. Life is bright for the urban elite, for the rest, this life is an impossible aspiration. The only way is to bend the rules. Meet a successful man. Hi, I make films. Well, business is good. Well, booming pretty much. I've survived. I love cars. And the good thing is today, there's a hell of a lot of choice available. There is Toyota, there is Honda, Opel, Mitsubishi, and many others. But where do you drive these cars? There is no place on the road. It's jam-packed. 600,000 cars in Delhi, capital of India. Neglect public transport. Go for a car. Today I feel like leaving the city. There is so much of pollution. Delhi's air is full of particulate matter, the tiniest and most dangerous pollutant. Particulates come from diesel, from thousands of cars running on diesel engines. Diesel is cheaper in India than petrol. Government levies no tax on it. Automobile companies have used this to their advantage. Luxury diesel cars are a rage in Delhi. Well, I drive a diesel car. They're powerful, they're big. And I must thank the government for keeping the diesel prices low. <laughs> 